Hey, what is up guys? This indicator predicted 7 recent financial recessions. Now it indicates that we are going for another recession very, very soon. No, I do not have crystal ball in front of me, but what I do have is inverted yield curve. In this video, I will explain what is inverted yield curve, why it's so accurate, and why yield curve is inverting right now. An inverted yield curve is when yields on the bonds with shorter duration are higher than yields on the bonds with the longer duration. It's an abnormal situation that often signals upcoming recessions. In a normal yield curve, the shorter term bill yields less than the long term bonds. Investors expect a lower return when their money is tied up for a shorter period of time comparing to higher return when their money is tied up for the longer period of time. To give you a simple analogy, which kind of makes sense if I borrow from you $1000 and I promise you to pay you 1 month later plus let's say 2% interest. In 1 month you would receive from me $1020. But what if I borrow money from you not for 1 month but let's say for 30 years. You would not see your money for 30 years which you could have used to make some profitable investment decisions. Well, hopefully. In this case, it makes sense if you would require a higher rate of return, let's say 5%. But what happens when yield curve inverts? When this happens, investors have little confidence in the near-term economy. They believe that economy will encounter some obstacles on its way moving forward. They demand more yield for short-term investments than for the longer-term investments. They would prefer to buy long-term bonds and tie up their money for years even though they receive lower yields. They would only do this if they believe that the economy is going to get worse in the near term. What an inverted yield curve means an inverted yield curve is most worrying when it occurs with treasury yields. That's when yields on the short term treasury bills, notes and bonds are higher than long term yields. The US Treasury Department sells them in 12 maturities. They are from 1 month and all the way to 30 years duration. Will be 3 points higher than yield on a 3 months bill. An inverted yield curve means investors believe they will make more money by holding onto long-term treasury than shorter term one. They know that with the shorter term bill, they have to reinvest that money in few months. If they believe recession is coming, they expect the value of the short term bills to plummet very soon. They know that Federal Reserve usually lowers the Fed fund rates when economy slows. Short-term treasury bills yield track the Fed fund rates. So why does the yield curve invert? As an investor to long-term treasury bonds, the yield on those bonds fall. They are in demand, so they do not need a higher yield to attract investors. The demand for short-term treasury bills falls. They need to pay higher yield to attract investors. Eventually, the yield on the short-term treasuries rises higher than the yield on the long-term bonds and yield curve inverts. Recessions last 18 months on average. If investors believe a recession is imminent, they will want to save investment for 2 years. They will avoid any treasury less than 2 years. That sends demand for those bills down, sending their yield up. An invert occurs. When we look at this image from 2000 and 2001 dot com bubble, which led to major recession, we can see that 2 year, 5 year, 7 year and even 10 year notes and bond had higher yield than 30 year treasury bond. Yield curve was inverted and consequently to that we experienced a major recession. The yield curve also predicted the 2008 financial crisis two years earlier. The first inversion occurred on December 20, 2005. The Fed worried that the asset bubble in the housing market had been raising the Fed fund rates since June 2004. 
by December it was 4.25%. That pushed the yield on 2-year Treasury bill to 4.41%. But the yield on the 10-year Treasury note did not raise as fast, hitting only 4.39%. That meant investors were willing to accept a lower return for lending their money for 10 years than 2 years. On July 17, 2006, an inversion worsened again when the 10-year note yielded 5.07%, less than 2-year note which yielded 5.12%. This showed that investors thought that Fed was headed in the wrong direction. It was warning of impending subprime mortgage crisis. However, we do not need a complete reversion how we have seen in 2000's dot-com bubble. Inversions between any time duration could be just enough to be the cause of the bubble. This inversion led to another financial crisis in 2008. Why the yield curve is inverting right now? On December 3, 2018, the Treasury yield curve inverted for the first time since the recession of 2008. The yield on the 5-year note was 2.83%, that's slightly lower than yield of 2.84% on a 3-year note. On December 4, inversion worsened. The yield on the 5-year note was 2.79%, while the yield on the 3-year note was 2.81%. Investors are saying that the economy will be a bit better in 5 years than in 3 years. The Federal Open Market Committee will finish raising the Fed fund rate in 2 years. It's planning to raise to 3.5% in 2020. Investors are worried that it could trigger an economic slowdown in 3 years, if Fed fund overshoots and raises the rate too high. They believe that the economy will be stronger in 5 years. This small inversion could be temporary, if it continues to worsen, then it could predict another recession. How is the yield curve helpful? The economic recession occurs when the spread between 10-year yield and 1-year yield is less than zero. If you look at carefully at the historical spread chart, you will notice that the current spread between 10-year yield and 1-year yield is 0.13%. The economic recession generally follows once the yield spread drops below 0%. This was an indication for every single recession in 1970s, 1975, 1980s, 1990s, 2000, and the most recent one, 2008. Especially when we look at 1980s, the yield spread reached all-time low of minus 3.10%. An inverted yield curve occurs and historically predicted the past 7 economic recessions. So is it going to be different this time? As soon as the spread between 10-year yield and 1-year yield drops below zero? I highly doubt it. People tend to believe that every time when we experience economic expansion and everything looks great, this time is going to be different outcome. But the history proves again and again to be the opposite. Market cycles will continue to happen because people do not think differently. Fear and greed exist in every single person. As long as humans will be involved in the market, we will continue to have market cycles in the future. As soon as spread between 10-year yield and 1-year yield drops below zero, which is indicated by the red line, the game will be over. We will enter into another upcoming recession. As soon as the spread between 10-year yield and 1-year yield will drop below zero, which indicated by the red line, we will enter into another recession. It's probably going to be game over. Because the upcoming recession, it might be the biggest recession we have witnessed in the recent history. It might be even bigger than the Great Depression in 1930. Well, right now we have some time and you should prepare by buying gold and potentially even Bitcoin to prepare for this upcoming and brutal recession. We came to the end, let me know what do you guys think about inverted yield curve? 
Are we going for another recession? Or is it just temporary inversion? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, do not forget to subscribe for more animated videos about financial market and cryptocurrencies. Other than that, thank you for watching, see you next time.